Alright, in this video I'm going to show the steps that I take to prepare armor from uh, shapes to line art and then shading and lighting. Here I'm exploring possible shapes for the armor and trying to keep pieces separate so that it makes it easier to design them. Uh, I decided to make this armor symmetrical even though I explored a couple asymmetrical options. If you end up adding asymmetry, I recommend doing it on a separate layer so that it doesn't conflict with the mirror functions. At around this point, I decided to explore what it might look like if it had illuminating elements or effects and symbols. This could be done at a later step, but I just find it so much fun and it uh, gets me more excited to finish the armor. At this point, I realize that it's going to be a better idea for the demo to just render out the symmetrical armor, so I hide the asymmetrical piece, and that can always be added in after. Here I got a little ahead of myself. I started applying some shading of some of the, the way that the fall off might affect the, the objects. I, and then started to do the line art. Um, you'll see that I didn't finish the line art on the entire design, so at one point I need to go back and finish the entire line work. Uh, but uh, something you can kind of see from this workflow is that you can kind of start working on pieces that have the line art finished, like sections of it, and then kind of go back and finish the line work if you need to, to then uh, have that information be useful for you for when, you, when it comes time to shade it. So that's kind of what happened here. The line art got developed on some pieces, and then I started shading those, and then I went back to finish the line work on the rest of it, and then continued the shading, because all those things were on uh, separate layers. This doesn't happen very often. But it's, it's nice to know that if you know there needs to be changes or something to the line work, uh, that you can kind of adapt to it because things are kept separate from the beginning. This is where I started to shade the surfaces based off of where the light is, which is around the center top part of the character. So surfaces that face down and away were shaded darker, and uh, that was mostly it just putting in uh, shading for planes that face away from the light source. Here you'll notice that I shaded the inner part of the character a little lighter and towards the outer edges of the character a little darker, and that's to kind of emphasize the form. Uh, imagine we had a sphere in front of us that was lit from in front of us, and the outside edges would be darker. So that's kind of the idea here. I still end up adding a little bit more light coming from above eventually, but it is good to start off with kind of the base forms and have things darken towards the uh, farther parts, the parts that start to round out away from us. I know we did the shading passes uh, separately before, but in this one, once you've gotten the hang of it, you can be applying all the shading passes uh, at around the same time, and that um, makes it a little faster. It may not make it easier, so if you feel like you're struggling, still separate your passes 
Uh, that's what I recommend if you're starting. Uh, but if you, if you start to get the hang of it, you can start just doing all the passes uh, at the same time. You can ignore this part. This part was just me kind of separating out a part of the armor that um, was in my mind going to be darker so that it stands out a little bit more from the trim. Uh, so you could ignore this part. You can still look at it as if I'm painting it completely grayscale because that's kind of what's going through my head. Um, but yeah, and then this darkness that you're seeing that I'm applying on this kind of interior blue area or, or around the edges, I'm seeing that it's kind of like an ambient occlusion because there's trim or elements that are sitting on top of the armor. And this is going to be a situation where I realize like I want to change the line work a little bit for the shoulder. So just another example that you know things can still be changed. Just make sure you do the line work changes on the line work layers. Okay, I'm going to go back a couple steps here to kind of the beginning, and here I have the character with the cloth is partially visible. Uh, while you're working on this, you're probably going to want to either have the character cloth that we did visible, not visible, or fully visible. Uh, depends on, on you. If, if you want the cloth to line up and match up better with the armor that you're applying, uh, then I would probably leave it partially or fully visible. But if you are getting distracted by the cloth, you can turn it off just to work on the armor and it doesn't need to make sense with the cloth layer. So mine is going to be partially visible, and I've already dropped in some shapes here. Uh, the only thing is I'm going to finish the line work here so that when I get to rendering it, I have an easier time. So we're just going to lower the opacity, set this to 20. I also created this gray layer just to knock back the character just so I could focus on the armor. So here's my line layer, and I'm just going to continue to develop the lines just so I have something some information there to shade uh, when, when I get to that step.
Okay, now that the liner is pretty much figured out and set, we're going to select the outside with the magic wand tool. Go to select. Inverse selection. And next step is optional, but I tend to uh, modify the selection uh, at this point. I'll just zoom in. And I'll uh, contract, it by, contract it by one pixel, uh, just so that it becomes uh, a much uh, more accurate selection. And then I'll uh, create a solid color layer uh, and a mask. Solid color, let's raise this up. Solid color layer. And the mask should automatically be applied to it when you create it while you have a selection. So this mask uh, comes in handy because we can just drop this onto our uh, folder now. We were using a different mask before, but now we can just overwrite this mask here just by dropping this in here. So this is our line art layer here that I'm highlighting right now. So this is our line art. I'll duplicate it once just so it's a little bit easier to see uh, on the video. And in the folder, we have the mask here applied. We currently can't see it filled in yet because uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a solid color in there yet. But we're just going to hide our shapes now. We don't really need them anymore once we are happy with our line art. So we have our line art here. And inside of our folder, we have, liner, we have a folder with the mask. Inside the folder, you want to have a solid color at the very bottom. Uh, here, this is all filled in with white. And I'm going to uh, change that slightly because we're going to start painting it in now. Uh, a mid-tone is good so that you can start to apply shadows and light onto this. Uh, I started off here with this base as I was doing earlier. Uh, here I'm kind of calculating the simplest forms and applying shadow based off of the light that's placed above the character around here. And making all my decisions based off of where the surface is uh, if it's facing towards towards the light or away from the light and kind of just going off of that. Okay, we did this approach for the uh, weapons part and now we're just going to kind of keep doing it for, for this one here. It's a, it's a pretty safe approach especially if you're very comfortable with liner so that you, you just know exactly what so that you know what the idea is going to be when you when you get around to applying your shading. Sometimes you might make some adjustments uh, here, like like I did. I didn't, I didn't want this. I didn't know I wanted this kind of teardrop shape here in in between these pieces here. Uh, but after I kind of painted it on, I realized oh, it would kind of look nice there. And this these sections here that I'm painting in are going to be kind of like slightly. Um, there's going to be like where well, there's going to be elements of color here. I was testing it out with a solid color layer, which you can do at this point as well. You can select pieces that you think will be a certain color. If your line art is actually done, you could just use the magic wand tool on your line art. You just magic wand tool out here. This is kind of risky, but you can alt-click your line art just to show your line art. Uh, but once, what's even safer is by just using your magic wand tool and clicking here where it says sample all layers, turn that off, unchecked, so that whenever you click, you're just clicking on your line art layer. Even if it's not selected, you're actually, it needs to be selected, I think, yes. So now that the line art's done, I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go through it all and uh, shade it a little more. Uh, for the uh, shading approach, I'm just using a uh, simple brush here and just painting a dark value, and then using my eyedropper to kind of pull that value out by holding Alt click and out this way. And that's just kind of rinse and repeat. Occasionally, I'll do blend nice uh, over the over the brush strokes just to do a little bit of slight blending uh, or to get rid of the brush texture if I don't want it, but. For the most part, I try to not use the blending tool too much. Okay, and let's see, I started painting on here on the left side. And uh, the blending tool is not something that gets used recreated in the mirror function in Photoshop. So if you if you end up working on just one side, you're gonna need to mirror it onto the other side yourself. Here I'm just gonna keep working on this left side and uh, develop it, and then we're gonna mirror everything over to the other side. I did add another piece in here that's kind of angled down in a way, it ends up merging. With the other piece here. As you can see, the, the hard angles are much uh, better in terms of information. Or, or sorry, the edges are better for knowing where to uh, make the light lighter or darker depending on uh, where the light position is. Up here in this top part, it's starting to bend away from the light source, which is up here in this direction, like above the head. So this part will start to get darker.
Okay, we're gonna take all these uh, shading layers and merge them. And we'll do a uh, mirror right here, just in case it didn't mirror everything. And for the most part, everything is um, kind of where it needs to go. I did take a triangle, fully opaque brush. Uh, I did lower the opacity to kind of tidy up some things. Uh, triangle brushes, I think, are really good for uh, hard edges, especially if you have line art and you want to line it up to the line art uh, so that it's not like a fuzzy, fuzzy edge. Uh, hard, um, hard edge brushes with lots of opacity on them, as in, as in that they're, they're non-transparent, uh, are really good for making some very crisp edges. Okay, now that everything's pretty much in there now, uh, I'm not too worried about blending uh, into it. Uh, so, yeah, now that all the values are pretty much set, uh, we can. Actually, let me fix this part right here. Alright, this part was looking just a little too bright uh, from far away, or where it was. Okay, uh, yeah. So now that we have it uh, more or less shaded in now, uh, yeah, we're essentially done with the armor. Uh, let's turn on the character or take off the little screen underneath. And in terms of color. Uh, you don't need to apply color, but just so we can see the armor a little bit better here. So here it is with the line art, uh, and it could even yeah, here it is with the line art, and here it is with the values, and we can even drop in a solid color layer in here, and set it to hard light just so we can see the armor standing out against the rest of the, the design. Now when doing the uh, armor shading, you probably want to stay away from uh, bright values and treat it as a matte uh, surface, something that's kind of dull. Um, we're going to uh, have a, a week where we spend uh, adding highlights and adding a kind of more reflective and uh, shiny um, kind of pass to these. Uh, it's not a bad idea to practice uh, highlights, but it's um, yeah, we're going to have a week off for that. So highlights, if you do decide to kind of try them out a little bit, they they're essentially light that's kind of bending on the surface and it's sort of stretching and being reflected on the surface. You, you always kind of want to have these on a separate layer from everything else so you can kind of freely adjust them if, uh, if need be. And yeah, sometimes they'll, they'll be found along the hard edges. But it depends on where your light source is and where your light's coming from and also the material. If it's uh, you know, probably really shiny and reflective, then you're going to probably see more highlights on it. Where metals are often found near um, near where the highlights would hit, so like the, the higher areas of, of the armor. One more thing I'll add here is that if you wanted to make this armor look like it's really sitting on the character, then you would have it create a little bit of a shadow, especially um, like here underneath underneath um, you know where it would cast a little bit of a uh, cast shadow. So sometimes I'll do this in a full black layer and then just lower the opacity, and that's. Um, that's one way to kind of make things really feel like they're you know, affecting one another in terms of lighting. You could go another step and if you happen to have it with your cloth, you can kind of do both. Uh, you know, have it, have it affecting your cloth, if there's wrinkles, the shadow will also change uh, there. So this is, a, this is a layer that you can add underneath your folder and mask so that you just paint it and you don't have to worry about going over anything else. And the closer the object is to the form, the less, the smaller the shadow is going to be. Um, or the tighter the shadow is going to be. And just in case, as a refresher, when you're when you're rendering these, these, uh, you want to be thinking about a couple different things here. Uh, the surface, the surface is angle, uh, and if it's kind of angled towards the light source or if it's rounding out away, or even fully turned the other direction. 
so it's facing away from the light source, or even to the side, which would be kind of more, more of a gray value. It goes kind of off to you know, the side. Better example here could be a box. Where it's angled more upwards towards where light is, and then the other ones less so, and the ones angled down and away are darkest. So that's the first one. Uh, the other one is if your objects are really close together, where light will have any trouble, uh, like have trouble getting into those areas, or even small, tiny uh, cracks like this, uh, then that is going to create some ambient occlusion. And that is going to be like if you have a plane and a ball that sits on, on it, then where those two objects are really close together, you'll get a little bit of a shadow right underneath those, right between those. So where things are really close together, light has trouble bouncing and getting into, that would be the occlusion. And then another one is uh, same, similar if you have a plane, and then have a, uh, we'll put a cylinder this time around, or a sheet of paper. So we have a piece of paper here, and light is over here coming in from this side, then it's going to block light from hitting the plane underneath it, and it'll have a cast uh, shadow. This, this is the one that I like to do in full black, because then you can just use the opacity slider to adjust how dark uh, you want it to be. And almost rarely is it ever full black, but you can play around with it. The more higher it is, the more dramatic, the more uh, yeah, dramatic the lighting will feel. And the farther away from the light source, the, sh the cast shadow becomes, and sometimes you'll see it smoothen out a little bit and be a little bit blurrier, but usually not near the starting point area. So yeah, so cast shadows, uh, so we did surface angle, we did uh, ambient occlusion, and then uh, cast shadows. And then the last one is, uh, let's say you have your you have your armor here, which I'll just make a little helmet. Get a shoulder, chest armor, light plates, and your light source is up here. Then you're going to end up with a some sort of a subtle gradient. Uh, this could be applied with the uh, soft light. Sorry, this could be applied with a soft brush, and it's basically going to mean that you're basically meaning that your objects closer to your light source are tend to be a little bit brighter, and then objects farther away are going to be a little darker. So you're going to start to see a little bit of a gradient here. This is something that you should probably apply last, uh, otherwise it's going to... But you could try it for, at the beginning, but usually I, I apply this uh, in small amounts at the, at the beginning or in large amounts at the end, just to kind of reinforce the lighting. And with all these things, you want to be thinking about the base form of things, the simple forms of things. So when you go to render a shoulder, for example, you know, if it wraps around, think of it like a sphere. So this is like a corner of a sphere here. Right, rounding out as it gets uh, toward the outside. And uh, same thing could be for a chest plate that you design, you know, like a ball, essentially. Most of the times you'll find that the edges get darker as you get farther and farther out from the center of the figure. But for the legs, you have a cylinder, you on the arms, you can treat, treat them like a cylinder. You just shade the left side and the right side, leaving the light in the middle, and let them transition to that bright spot in the middle. So for most things, you want to be tackling them in, in this fashion to kind of maximize uh, the form, and also being efficient with just rendering and painting in general, as describing the biggest form is going to uh, make it look like it's closest to being uh, finished, or at least realistic in form and lighting. And that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it.